Hello everyone and assalamu alaikum. This is going to be another video on the disruptive mood dysregulation disorder and in this video you will learn about the diagnostic features of the disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. Now the last video was about the criteria of the disruptive mood dysregulation disorder in which you have learned about the criteria of the disruptive mood dysregulation disorder according to DSM-5, DSM-5-TR and abnormal psychology and I've also tried my best to make each and every criteria easy and clear to understand by giving some or by sharing some examples with you people so if you haven't watched that video i've given the links in the description section go ahead click on those links and watch that video and if you want to enroll in the online free courses of the psychology you can subscribe to my channel and if you want to enroll in the full course of the psychological disorders or mental disorders according to the SM5, DSM5 TR and abnormal psychology, you can also subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so you will never ever miss any notification. Okay. So this video is going to be about the diagnostic features of the disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, which is also abbreviated as DMDD. So in this video, you will learn about the core features of the, the diagnostic features of the DMDD. So the core feature of the DMDD or the Disruptive Move Dysregulation Disorder is chronic, severe, persistent irritability. And this irritability has two clinical manifestations, or should I say two prominent clinical manifestations. The first one is frequent temper outburst, which typically occurs in response to frustration and can be verbal or behavioral or both. So the behavioral outbursts include aggression against property, self or others and this should satisfy the criteria b c e and f which means that such outbursts should be frequent enough that this occurs on average three or more times per week and these these must be present for 12 months or more and must be noticeable in at least two settings among home school and peers and it should be developmentally inappropriate now the second prominent clinical manifestation is chronic persistent irritability or angry mood that is present between the severe temper outbursts and keep this in mind that this must be characteristic of the child because we have already learned this in the previous video that dmdd the severe mood dysregulation disorder is the disorder of the child it's a childhood disorder so Keep this in mind that this must be the characteristic of the child and it must satisfy the criteria D, which means that it should persist for most of the day, nearly every day and noticeable by others in child's environment. So the clinical presentation of the disruptive mood dysregulation disorder must be carefully done and distinguished from other related disorders and it should not be confused with other related conditions particularly pediatric bipolar disorder or any other medical conditions so the clinical presentation of the disruptive mood dysregulation, uh, dysregulation disorder must be carefully done so this was all about today's video if your concept is clear you can like the video if there was any point that was a bit confusing you did not get it you can ask me in the comment section and i'll be happy to help you out plus if you're new to this channel you can subscribe to my channel click on the bell icon so you will never ever miss any notification you can also share the link of this video the link of our channel with your family members and friends because sharing is caring until then allah hafiz